Hey everybody, my name is Motoko and this is a Studio One video tutorial. Today I wanted to talk to you about templates. Now templates are basically your default starting points or pre-configured um, Studio One starting points from which you create a new song. Using templates will allow you to quickly get into the more creative part of the music production process and not having to worry too much about setting up the song to its sort of default configuration. From the first release on, Studio One has supported the use of templates. And you may have already seen them, or maybe even you're using them, from the new song dialog. If you create a new song, you will see this dialog box, and you will be able to select a template. Now, most of these templates are based on audio interfaces that are made by PreSonus, which is, of course is very cool. Um, but in the way I work, um, I usually have a different kind of setup um, and I like to work with specific processing plugins and specific bus settings um, in my mixer. Now, until version 1.6 of Studio One, that gave me a bit of a problem because there was no unlimited bus, bus routing, um, which means that I wasn't able to route a bus into a bus, into a bus, into a bus, and so on and so forth. Now, with version 1.6, PreSonus gave us the opportunity to have unlimited bus routing within Studio One, and um, that gave me the opportunity to actually make the template the way I wanted it to, and the way it serves me as a good starting point when creating new songs. Now, there's no limit to the amount of templates that you can create, but I'll just walk you through how I set up my template and the way I use it, and maybe it'll give you some ideas to make your own. Now, first of all, when you're creating a template, you wanna create a new song. Um, and let's call this template Motoko. It's great. Um, Studio One songs, perfect for storage. Um, I usually work in 32 bit floating point resolution. Um, time based bars, that's fine. Song length. We're actually going to create a song that is longer than this, but I'll be. Um, doing that from the marker track later on. And I want to stretch the audio loops to the song tempo. The template I choose is an empty song. One tip I have um, is uh, something that I use a lot is that when I create a template, I also create a song with it. Now, obviously you have to create a song with it because otherwise you can't build a template. But what I do is I actually save the song um, where I built the template in, so that if I wanted to change the template or wanted to create a new template based on that specific song, then I can always go back, recall it, and make the changes I need. Now, once you have configured or entered the, the, the values that you need here, it's time to create the song. Let me just clear this up. Okay, so now we are looking at an empty song. Because of the ease of use of Studio One and because of how easy it is to create instruments and audio tracks, my template won't be having any audio or instrument tracks. Because if you want to create a, uh, um, a track with a synth, for example, you just drag and drop the synth into the arrangement. One other reason that I don't pre-configure my arrangement section with audio tracks and or instrument tracks is that I don't have a, um, a very consistent way of working. If you look at drum tracks, for example, at some point I may use audio samples on an audio track. I may choose to use impact uh, with a complete kit loaded, or I may even use um, sample one with just an individual sample used. So there's no need for me to set up any predetermined tracks 
because I have no idea of what my workflow will look like um, and what type of instruments or approach I'll be using when building the songs. There is one exception, however, and that is because most of the time I produce electronic dance music. Um, I, rely, I rely heavily on a production technique called side chaining. And I'm not going to explain exactly what side chaining is, uh, side chain compression to be more precise, but basically it takes a trigger signal, which is in most cases the kick drum, um, and uses that as a trigger for a compressor to compress any audio going through it. Um, and techniques is very often used for creating a bit more room in a bass line for the kick to be more uh, snappy and more profound in the mix. Now setting up a sidechain compression construction um, is basically pretty straightforward in Studio One. Um, what I do usually is that I create an audio track, um, which let's take a stereo track, um, and I'll call that sidechain kick because I know that most of the time I'll be using a audio sample of a kick drum to trigger my sidechain. Cool. Now let's go to the mixer um, and take out the phone out here. As you see, I've got a stereo track right here. It's called sidechain kick. Let's give that uh, a nice color. Do that. Um, this will be the trigger signal, but I will also need a bus with the sidechain compressor. Now, let me just create a bus here. So it's a nice color and call this sidechain bus. Cool. Now I need a compressor on it. I could choose the default Studio One compressor. It has sidechain capabilities. It's a very transparent and very good compressor, um, but I'm not going to do that. I could also choose my favorite third party compressor, um, which has also sidechain cap capabilities, but is also a single band compressor. I'll show you that one a bit later on. Um, but what I really like to have is some sort of control over the different frequency bands that I am going to compress. Most of the time, I will be sidechain compressing a bass line, which is great. It has a very specific frequency range. And most of the time, the compression settings can be a bit more aggressive uh, in order to free up some space for the kick. But if you want to create a bit of a flow or a bit of a pumping effect, um, you also may run your synth uh, instrument, your synthesizers through the sidechain bus. You can run effects through the sidechain bus, and you can even run vocals through the sidechain bus. Now, all these different elements operate at different frequencies, and the amount of compression um, may vary. Now, you can do this by setting up specific sidechain buses with single band compressors and doing a sort of band passing on the input signal. But I find that to be a bit cumbersome and it actually clutters the workflow a bit. So what I've done is I've done this. Um, let me just open up my dynamics. Um, and this is a third party plugin from Waves. And let me just drop it on here. This is C6, and C6 is a basically a four band multi band compressor with two additional floating bands. Um, but one of the really cool features is that this multi band compressor has sidechain input. And I can switch all the bands to external which means that now they take the trigger from the external sound source. Now, I'm not going to configure C6 right here um, because it all depends on the kind of track I'm working on, the material I'm working with, um, but it's just you know an idea to, 
to show you what my template is like. So let me close this up. Okay. So I have a side channel bus. I can route audio into it. It's going to the main out, which is good. But I need to connect the kick, the sidechain trigger source, to the compressor. I'll just get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Um, now, that's also very easy to set up. I just take a send sidechain, and as you can see, it already announced itself as a sidechain input on uh, for Studio One. So, there you have it. I now have a send running from my trigger signal into the compressor. Okay. So far, so good, but this is actually not finished yet because what happens now is that if I put a um, if I put a sample a kick sample on this track um, it would actually be audible in the mix okay granted it would be used as a send but I don't want to have that signal in my mix now if I mute or put the fader on infinity um, then I won't be able to, able to hear the sample in the mix, but there is no output going to the sends as well. And why is that? And that is because by default, all the sends in Studio One are post fader, which means that the signal goes through the inserts, through the fader, and then to the send. But if it's by default, post fader that would suggest that there is an option to put it pre fader and there is this little switch over here pre fader on off allows you to switch the send to pre fader it turns yellow and what's happening now is that the fader doesn't control the level of the send Let me just get this up to zero um, which means that I can put the the fader on infinity and still have a, uh, a signal going out through the sends um, in this situation on 0 dB. Now, the reason I'm not using a mute button is because when I'm working in a song and I'm working with solo and mute options, um, you know, you have a chance that you actually uh, may switch on the sound from the sidechain trigger track. Um, which will introduce the kick. And I have a kick running throughout the entire length of the song, so I can have that pumping effect even when the main kick of the track isn't playing. Um, and I don't want to run the risk of introducing a new kick into my track or into the mix um, when I'm muting or soloing different tracks. Now that's basically it. Um, what you can do is you can take a kick sample um, and you know just basically put it on here um, and if you're producing um, house music you can have it on each downbeat it's four to the floor um, if you're producing drum and bass it would more likely be something like this for example where you will have uh, a more, um, let's say, hip-hop type beat going on. Uh, I'm not going to put on the samples just yet because I will do a little... Um, I will do a little framework uh, with the marker track later on. Um, and the start of the song will actually not be on the first bar. Okay, so I have a sidechain bus set up and a sidechain kick. Great. Um, all the other things that I'm going to do uh, for this template are going to be in the mixer section. And uh, let's start with the master output. On the post, um, I have a spectrum 